turn right, I'm gonna make some noises. If you can put it behind your shoulder right now, you can take it. Ready? Right that shoulder, slow and steady. Pretty nervous right now. You shot your first buck. Michigan's gun season is here, and so is what might be our last hunt ever on the back. Field. We've always planned to give this place away after two years, but I've got one more task. This week's hunt is all about getting Dan J. Joe his first deer and getting Idaho native Dane Acevedo the prize we all hoped for when he won the Back 40 Hunt giveaway. Steve Rinella was supposed to be joining us too, but instead, he stuck at home under COVID quarantine. So, I'm running solo and hoping the Back 40 provides one last time. Cool. Dan, welcome back. Thank you. I'm back. You uh, got to know us maybe a little too well this summer. A little too well. <laughs> Putting in the time for sure. I've seen the episodes and it, it's cool to piece it together now. Because like, I've seen the top, like, the top view and kind of running through it when you guys are setting it all up season one and it's cool to see it all now. So I've got a few things we'll run through real quick. Deer especially need two things. They need security cover, and then they need food. If they have those two things, they'll hang out. Mm -hmm. So everything we've been doing mm -hmm. these last couple of years when it comes to at least the deer part has been trying to add food or cover. So right. we've done that in these fields. Yep. In the middle, we've got this big swamp that runs down, and that's like the hub of our wheel. There's lots of cover there. This and all is that's like just your, like untouched ground pretty yeah, much, right? Pretty much leave it alone because it's great. One other interesting thing we've got going on this time of year is that we've got the whole hunting pressure impact. So when all these hunters all of a sudden go to all these properties around, it's gonna move a lot of deer around. They're yeah. gonna be spooking deer here and there, and a lot of deer are gonna to try to find whatever safe pockets are around where they don't think they're gonna be disturbed, that's where they're gonna to flock to. We have one of those safe pockets, this big swamp. Okay. So we're kinda of gonna be counting on, after day one, a lot of these deer are gonna crunch into there, and hopefully we can keep them thinking they're safe, Yeah. and uh, they won't be quite that safe. <laughs> This is a picture perfect night before gun season Michigan kind of dinner. Homemade mac and cheese. And then I got brats here from the buck I just killed last week. So a little droppy is gonna be on the bun today. <laughs> I know, that's the truth. Very nice. Enjoy. Bon appetit. I'm just super stoked to be here and uh, I, I think I go on a lot of hunts like that. Just what happens, happens. And if we're successful, awesome. If not, happy to be here still. I was a little nervous about the gun situation, you right? Agree. Which is not having much experience with a, a high powered rifle. A bullseye on your first shot today. <laughs> <laughs> Are you doing better than that? my first shot. I mean, <laughs> but I'm just, you know, making, a, making the right shot, making a, a good shot, right? You know, I think there's something to be said about having especially in that first time or second time, you're having that voice in the back of your head actually be present. Because I know from the first time I ever shot at a deer, it was like a blackout experience. <laughs> where like, it just happened, all of a sudden like the arrow shot and there was an arrow sticking in a tree. <laughs> what happened? I couldn't quite remember yeah. what happened there. But when you have a friend or a family member there who can kind of say the things that you that should be in your checklist mm -hmm. but are hard to keep track of in that very intense moment yeah you know having some okay slow down just breathe right take a couple extra seconds before pulling the trigger yeah that's something that i wish i'd had the first time and i just didn't here's what we have on tap for tomorrow wind advisory southwest to west winds of 25 to 35 miles an hour with gusts of 45 to 55 mile an hour <laughs> winds expected <laughs> 
Are you ready for that? <laughs> as ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what I'm nervous about. I want to make sure that you guys see something. <laughs> I really hope that, I really hope this that this guy's lying. There's no really deer here. That. Every single time I bring people out here, I'm stressed to the max about that. Like, please let the back 40 cooperate. Um, <clears throat> and worst case scenario, mm -hmm. a lot of fire time. We've got fire and cold beer. <laughs> always got that to come back to. Can't always complain about that. Yep. It's easy to take for granted just how lucky I was to have my dad showing me the hunting ropes from such an early age. Hunting's not the kind of thing that most people can just jump into without some serious guidance. That's what makes Dan's journey here so unlikely. For a city kid from the suburbs of Detroit, without any of his family or friends being into this stuff, it's kind of shocking that he's not only developed an interest in hunting, but that he's headed out into the woods on his own after nothing but some online research. This is his one chance to get some good quality one-on-one -on -one help. And this is my one chance to impart something worthwhile. There you go. All right, man, I think we're set. Lovely day. <laughs> right, man, I think that it's probably, yeah. probably put in enough time. Yeah. No, that makes sense. With this wind, it's we're just kind of wishing on a prayer right now. So let's get out of here. See if the tent's still standing up. And then, uh, <laughs> Hopefully. Figure out, figure out what to do tonight. <laughs> Sounds good. Today was rough, with just a few fleeting glimpses of deer. We've worked our tails off on this farm to ensure days like this would be a thing of the past. And I know we made some progress, but right now, it's starting to feel like we're right back at square one. All right guys, I feel like today is a little bit like a retake on our first day's hunt. We're gonna have significantly lower winds, 20 degree cooler temperatures. So this should be a lot better. It's another slow morning. It's got me mulling over what to do. I know Dane's having a good time, but Dan needs more than that. I've got so much deer knowledge up in my head that I want to pass on, but I also realize it could get pretty annoying having me whisper in his ear for three straight days. I'm finding it's a tricky balance, but with the weather looking better tonight, I'm hopeful that we'll finally have some real life learning opportunities on the horizon. Trail is. It's a little 
Ballen Bad Figures. A box appeared straight downwind, and we need to completely rearrange. It's a bona fide fire drill. This guy. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> we heard the shots go off. And we're like, that was close. That had to be Dan. I pulled out my phone and I was just waiting, and waiting, waiting. And then it was shots fired. I wanted more. I was like, <laughs> and you hit something. And it was a bug. He did great. It was suspenseful. <laughs> waiting for that. Uh, tell me what happened. He was facing right at us, so we didn't really have a, a, a good shot at him. So, like Mark said, we waited a minute or two, and he started turning away. And uh, it looked like he was walking away, but then he looked back and presented a really good quartering away shot, and just kind of gathered myself and t I, I think took a good shot. So um, <laughs> he's, he's, he's real quarter. nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah that post shot he just keeps on saying, "I want to get too excited. I want to get too excited." <laughs> <laughs> so, That's awesome. so yeah, I mean, it happened real fast. Happened really fast, so okay. looked like he he kind of took a couple leaps to the edge of the timber, and then took like one step in there, and you can kind of I look back, and you can just see what looks like. Nice. So I feel like 90 plus percent sure he dropped just inside the timber. There should be blood. There should be hair. There should be a white belly just inside the timber. What the hell happened? Come on, blood. Let's we'll step to the rocks, and if we don't see anything past the rocks in there, then we're gonna have to slow back down. Yeah, keep going. Man, 
I don't know. I mean, it could be, but it also could be one that's very smashed. Mm -hmm. I desperately want this to be blood, but I know it's probably not. And I know something else too. We're not going to find this deer. How did I screw this up? of tequila it'll dry up his eyes with a temporary smile I'm sorry dude it is what it is yeah it is um, it's the toughest the toughest thing you're ever gonna have to deal with is on yeah. yeah. But it is a reality that every every once in a while that kind of thing does happen. Right. right. The way I've always approached this is the same thing I told my dad a month ago. I've always thought feel it tonight. It's gonna be a bummer. It's gonna be a real kick in the gut. So I kind of feel it think about it and then tomorrow is a new day yeah you're gonna learn something from it yeah. you're gonna grow from it you're gonna <coughs> you're gonna be a, a better hunter because of it starting tomorrow sure yep and um and then you go from there yeah can't change what happened in the past so onward onward that's right to his credit, Dan tried again, and it didn't happen. The line between success and failure in hunting is the thinnest imaginable. This wasn't the lesson I'd hoped to impart on this hunt, but it's the one we got. I can tell you one thing, for whatever it's worth, just the trajectory I've seen from meeting you last fall to working with you this summer to now this hunt and hearing the progress you're making and seeing you out here you're right there I know it didn't happen it didn't happen today it didn't happen on this trip but you're you are on the right path yeah, so thanks. keep at it thanks yep keep at it <laughs> this yeah. is gonna come together for you soon yeah. there's no stopping now so yeah might as well keep at it for sure it was fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Thank you for having me out. I met Dan J. Joe through a National Deer Association mentorship program. The NDA is a conservation group that's dedicated to the ideas and deer we've chased on this farm. As we've gone along out here, I've realized that folks like Dan need a proving ground. They need more access and more places like this to learn. And if this is my last hunt on the back 40, I leave knowing that this is exactly what's going to happen on this land. We're going to hand the keys and this mission over to the NDA. And I couldn't think of a better future because this is what we do. We work and hunt. We gather food and knowledge and we pass it on. Everybody knows about trail cams for deer. This is the first ever squirrel cam. When I was in fourth and fifth grade, I did yo-yo uh, tricks for the talent show. The name of our group was The Rotations, and then we did it choreographed to music. All right, try it. The on button on. Isn't there an on button? What's that? It's like a cover scent, kind of cover up where I was touching it. <laughs> it might be. <laughs> it might be pointless I'm at this point. Sorry <laughs> to laugh, but holy shit! I packed my lunch today. Kind of late.
like a hipster kindergartner. I got cheese sticks. I got berries. I got avocado toast. This is like how I reward myself for being a good boy during the all day set. Nothing parties like a rental.